All right, so in our last part of the lesson, we talked about these ideas of corresponding parts, that if I'm given a congruent statement like those that you see in these questions, and you'll get these problems in the next packet eventually, we are told, okay, if these triangles are exactly the same, then that means that each pair of pieces, here's MK as my first two letters in this one, here's ST as my first two letters here, KL is going to match with TL. All I'm using here are the order of those letters. Those two triangles are a little bit weird maybe to see. One is sort of a rotation of the other, perhaps. But same idea with the angles, though. M, I can even see which two sides angle M touches. It's going to have to mark the same pair of sides in the other triangle. So yes, we already said with congruent parts, corresponding parts of these things, that we have to be able to have this match. And we said two polygons are congruent if all of their sides and all of their angles match up. What we're going to be talking about now in the opposite direction is how we can prove that triangles are congruent based on the information. Now, if you're an 8A student, we've already talked about a little bit of this, how we had to prove that every single side and every single angle was the same, just like it was in, for example, triangle ABC was congruent to triangle DEF. For B-Day students, you haven't had to see this yet, but we will actually have a way around it. We will have an ability for us to not have to go through quite as many hoops. We'll still be doing a couple of those proofs just to see how they're structured. But the important thing and the thing that you guys are going to be focusing on in class today are the ideas of how we can say that two triangles are the same without having a whole ton of information. There are these things called congruence postulates. You've heard the word postulate before. It's something that we universally accept in mathematics as being true. And it turns out that if we're just focusing on triangles, not any larger polygons, we're not doing any sort of uh, quadrilaterals, four-sided shapes, anything like that, we're saying specifically for triangles, it turns out that in order to prove that two triangles are congruent, I don't need to know all six pieces. I don't need to know all three sides and all three angles. As it turns out by this first one, side, 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 and very nicely abbreviated SSS, if I have the three sides, if I know that, for example, in this drawing, BR and KM match up, I know that RG and KG match up, and I know that BG and MG match up. I don't need to know anything about the angles. If I was to try to build a triangle using three different side lengths and structured it however I could, I actually had physical objects that I was trying to put together. That would be the only triangle I could make with that particular, well, three pieces of information. If I tried to reorder them in some way, if I tried to build a different triangle, all I managed to accomplish is that, as you can see here, it's a little bit of a reflection, mirror images of one another. Maybe I've turned it, maybe something like that. But in this scenario, yeah, all I would need to say that, to go in the order we said B, R, G, if I'm going you know, clockwise around that first one, is going to match with, well, I'd actually have to go the opposite direction on the other one, MKG. And I'm able to say this because of side, side, side. These three-letter codes, and there's going to be a few more of them that we talk about, discuss, hey, as it turns out, well, side, side, side. If I have all three of them, great, there's my SSS, I'm done. But it's not even the only way. We don't have to know all three sides. If we happen to know, as you see below, two sides and an angle, but please notice the order of these letters, S-A-S. -S. If two sides and the included angle of one triangle, what does the word included mean? Um, it means the angle that's between the two sides you know. It's the angle where the two sides that you know meet. So, for example, I'm going to pick two random sides in one of these triangles over here. Let's do BR and RG one more time. So let's say I knew those two sides were labeled. And each of those sides is going to have its own match in my other triangle. Great, I know two pairs of sides. If this was an SSS situation, if I was asked to show this using SSS, I'd need to know about these last pairs of sides. But that's not the case here. As it turns out, Maybe I don't have a way to know that BG and MG are the same, but I should still be able to say that these triangles are the same because, well, I have an angle that is formed where those two things meet. I have an angle where these two sides touch. 
Again, consider what we were saying about opening a pair of scissors, that the angle you make, okay, is going to impact just how long that third side is going to be. We did this when we were discussing what is the shortest side or what is the longest side of a triangle based on what is the smallest angle or largest angle. But now, if I have the same number of degrees here and each of these other two lines are the same length, then this line here has also got to be the same exact length as the one on the other triangle. Again, I don't need to know all six pieces. I don't need to know all of the other angles. I don't need to even know that third pair of sides. To be able to say right now, okay, there's BRG is congruent to MKG again. This time, though, I'm using SAS. We are eventually going to get to places where we have to prove that triangles are congruent using these two ideas, and it will be one of the reasons that we put into our two-column proof. For today, all I'm going to ask you guys to look at as we venture back to our IXL section, and I go to this one on SSS and SAS, I will simply be given three triangles and asked, tell me which ones are congruent. Now, when you are saying that two shapes are congruent, if you're going to go by SSS, I do need to know all three pairs of sides. In all of these triangles, all three sides are labeled. But what's important is that they have to be labeled in the same way. For example, in triangle EFG, I see this side marked with one dash, this side marked with three dashes, this side marked with four dashes. Okay, now I'm gonna make my way through the other ones. I have one with one dash, I have one with two dashes and four dashes. So here's a one, three, and a four, as I, for whatever reason, cannot write properly. And here's a one, a two, and a four. That doesn't match. Those labels aren't the same, so I can't say that the triangle on the left is the same as the triangle in the middle. Well, I've only got one triangle left, that's BCD, and I just need to make sure it matches with one of the others. And I'll go to BD and see it's marked with one. I'll go to BC and see it's marked with two. And I already know the only other triangle I saw that had a marking with two in it was this one in the middle, so I'm gonna be saying that these two triangles are in fact the same. Now, to go back to something I'd mentioned previously, it doesn't matter what order you choose for the first triangle you name. So if I'm gonna pick, let's say, that the middle triangle is the same as the rightmost triangle. Well, I can say this first triangle, this one in the middle, in whatever order I want. So uh, how about RST? Stick with alphabetical order, why not? What I now need to be careful about is that when I name the matching letters in this other triangle, that I'm consistent with the order. RST, if I look at this triangle here, I go along the side that's marked with one, is my first two letters, R to S, and then after I get to point S, I'll continue down the side that's marked with two. I want to be able to trace out that same idea in the other triangle. Well. Take a look at where angle R is. Angle R is where the line mark with one dash meets the line mark with four dashes. In my triangle on the right, that's angle D over here. So I started this first triangle with an R. I know I need to start this next triangle with a D. Obviously though, for saying that two triangles are the same, I need to be able to use three letters. But again, if I say that my first triangle, my middle one right here goes from R to S, along the line that's marked with one, well, there's only one way to go from angle D that gets to use a line that's marked with one. And so the second letter here would have to be B. And of course, third letter completes the triangle. So you will have the images and you'll have all the labels, but it's up to you to decide how am I going to name those triangles? Yay. And now you have one where you have to use SAS. That's harder. What's important to know here is, again, I need the angle to be between the two sides that I know. And I can see that. Yes, there, in all of these cases, here's angle R. It's touching the two lines that have marks on them. And I have the same idea going on in my other shapes. But again, when I'm picking which of these things is congruent, which a pair of these triangles are congruent, I need to make sure they have the same information, the same kinds of markings. This triangle at the bottom, RST, I've got a side that's marked with two of those little dashes. I don't have that in either of the others. So it's these two up top that I'm going to have to say are the same as one another. 
Great. I again need to make a statement that says that those things are the same. So again, pick one triangle to start with and go in whatever order you want. I kind of like to go in, let's do this as IHJ. And here's why. If we treat this the same way that we treated the previous question, I see IH is a line that's marked with one. Then I'm going to get to angle H, which has a corner on it that's labeled, and then I'll continue down the other known line, I, H, J. Well, if I want to compare that in my other shape, I need to start with a line that's marked with one, go to the corner that's marked with an angle that I know, and then along the remaining side. Well, if I'm going to try to match that up, that's got to be the same way of here's Y to W, here's W, to x. So I go to my other triangle and I say, yep, that's y, w, x, all right. Let's just double check one last time. I, h, j, y, w, x. That order looks the same to me, and so I'm good. Same as always, guys, your goal is to get an 85 here. Just be careful with questions that look like this. You can see that we've only answered two questions. I'm already up to a score of 28, so this is going to go a little fast if you're okay with it. However, I'm asked again about SAS here. So I need to say which of these triangles is going to be the same. Please notice in all of these triangles you are given two sides and one angle. But as we said with SAS, the order that you see these letters in is very important. The idea that the A in SAS lies directly between the two S's. The angle that I know needs to touch both of the sides that I know. And if I look at my first triangle, x, y, z, if I want to go alphabetically, I know two sides and one angle, but the angle I know only touches side x, y that I know. It doesn't touch the other one that's labeled. If I wanted this to be side, angle, side, I would need to basically be able to connect the dots. Side, angle, side. I'd need to know the angle in the corner of x, not the one that I have down there at y. So no need to even guess as to which two are going to be the same. I recognize the one on the left can't be. So my only options left are those other two. Again, just be consistent with how you start naming one of them. It does not matter what you pick for the first triangle. So again, if I really wanted to, alphabetical order. This is maybe another option for how you might want to start something. I started by saying, here's angle U. That's the angle that's marked. Well, in the other triangle, I'd better start at the angle that's marked. So I'm going to be starting with C. In my first triangle, UVW hit the line that was marked with one mark. Well, here it is in my other. So I'm going from C to D. I'll end at B. And those are the two triangles that would have to be congruent if I'm specifically asked for SAS. This one section is just going to be the same thing repeated over and over again. So you'll get a lot of practice with it. Again, please keep in mind, if you get a question wrong, please don't immediately try to skip to the next problem and call it a day. If I say that triangle A is congruent to triangle E, I'm clearly going to have an issue there, but at least this will walk me through. And you'll be learning about a few of these other things in the next video. But you'll be told, hey, here's how it is that we can go through this and understand, yep, I need the ones that match up. So as you go through this, please take your time. Please just make sure that you're looking and seeing, why did I get that question wrong? Oh, maybe I picked the triangle that, for example, has an angle that's not between the other two sides that I know. See how you do with this one? We will have one more section, one more video coming up to walk us through other ways that we can show two triangles are the same.